Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition to Three on Thursday. It is October 6th, 2022, and it is a beautiful fall day out there today. All right, let's just get right into stamping because I got some fun cards to make today and they might take us a little while. I wanted to show and review last week's cards and tell you who the winner is for last week's. This was our fun fold card that has a card within a card. So that is the fall card with the pumpkins. And then we had this fun fold that was a pop out window card. And then we had our Christmas card that's a framed card. And then on the inside we have that. So the winner drum roll please is Cindy McGee. So thank you very much Cindy for watching last week and commenting. Hello Karen, you must be at work because you're going to watch as long as you can. You can always watch the replay on either Facebook or out on YouTube. Um, this is my current host code that is for my personal host code. Hi, Terry. How are you this afternoon driving from St. Louis? Um, if you are in one of the stamp clubs, you have already been given that host code to use this month, okay? This is if you decide that you want to purchase something else other than what you get for the stamp club okay and then for any of my new customers that's not a member of the stamp club this is the host code that you need to use hello pat you found the site but no pics yet okay you might have to refresh your screen terry um because of the way that my assistant brought us in today she was playing around with StreamYard and got a countdown for us. Um, so try refreshing and let me know if that works for you, Terry. Okay. All right. So I'm going to bring in a grid paper here because we're going to do some lovely blending. And this is the set that we're going to be using today is the Grassy Grove. And then here is the die set that matches it. Okay, but we're not really going to be using any of the dies today. We're just going to be using the stamp set. All right. So I will probably play around and make another card using that um, die set because it looks so very intriguing to me. But we are going to be using the trees and the two um, long stamps here and our deer, and then our sentiment up there. So, all right. And this is the card that we're going to make. So it's a very masculine-looking card. It can be used as a birthday card, an anniversary card. All right. We're going to be using several colors of inks. For our blending, we're going to be using Crumb Cake, Daffodil Delight, Pumpkin Pie, and Balmy Blue. Let me get our kit out here. The base of the card is five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Then we have a piece of basic white, which is five and a quarter by four, and that's going to go on the inside. We have a piece of white, I mean, sorry, black. That is going to be our first layer and that is at five and a quarter by four and then a piece of basic white that we're going to do our sponging and stamping on and that is three and three quarters by five good terry i'm glad that you've got the picture now okay so we're going to begin with sponging and i'm going to start with my balmy blue and I, when I did my example, I did it to where it was kind of on an angle for me because I want to make my sky and my landscape all on an angle. All right. Now, balmy blue is a very light color, so we're going to have to lay down quite a bit of it to get the shade that we want. I started off the page, and then I brought my blending brush 
onto my white paper. So while I'm doing this, we can kind of chit chat. Um, celebrated my granddaughter's 13th birthday this week. She looks like a little diva. It's frozen. Try going out and starting it again, Terry, because everything looks fine on my end. So I cannot believe that Miss Audrey is 13. She does not look like she's 13. She looks more like she could be 15 or 16. Um, I am so glad that she is being raised to know appropriate and inappropriate clothing for girls because um, Dorothy and I went to a coffee shop the other day and we seen one of the employees get out of their vehicle. And I, at the time I didn't know it was necessarily an employee, but I had a good idea. And oh my word, let me tell you ladies, she could have just been wearing those boxer underwear shorts and that's what she looked like she had on. So now I'm coming in with my Daffodil Delight and I'm gonna come off again on my page and come back on. And I'm just going to kind of do on an angle this color. And then we're going to blend it all in together. Because this kind of just looks like it's the sun setting or could be rising. And now we're going to bring in our pumpkin pie. And I'm just going to use the same blending brush. This is kind of my yellow orangey brush. So yeah, so then um, Dorothy did take a picture of this person and we, I was just totally appalled by the way she was dressed, um, so much so that when we did get our coffees, I told the lady that was fixing our coffees, I said, um, you know, if she's an employee working here, I said, I feel that her outfit is totally inappropriate um i said it is an outfit that looks more like she would be a street walker in the city of chicago or new york st louis she then turned around no we then showed her the pictures that we had taken and her jaw dropped to her neck she says oh okay um she says, I hadn't seen that yet this morning. And I says, I know you haven't because you've been making our coffees. I guess it was on Audrey's birthday when we went up and got coffees. No, this must have been Tuesday. I don't remember. It was anyway, yesterday. one day this week. That's right, yesterday, because that was Audrey's birthday. I'm coming in with the crumb cake now. And I got a brand new blending brush for my browns. And I just want to make my ground appear to be a little bit dirty. Might have got a little bit much there on that one side, but it'll be all right. Um, so, interesting question. If you all see something at an establishment, a business, do you try to bring it to the attention of the manager or the owner? Or do you just figure that it's really none of your business and um, you leave it go? I'd be interested to knowing. And it's, it's not that I want to be cynical, but as a customer, I feel that, um, and I got some ink up there, doggone it. Oh, well. Um, I think that it's important that their customers let them know if they see inappropriate things going on with their employees. Um, let's see if I can cover that 
orange up a little bit. I don't know if I can or not, but we're gonna we're gonna try. We might even bring in bring in my yellow and we'll see if we can bring down a little bit more from our sky here. So blending is just kind of a fun thing. I find it therapeutic. Some people think coloring is therapeutic. I think sponging or blending is therapeutic. All right, so we are done with those colors. Doesn't look like much now, but it will turn into something pretty amazing. We are finished with those. All right. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to stamp our deer. And I did use our masking paper, and I stamped and fussy cut. Oops, I just tore the deer's head off. It's all right. I'm not doing the deer anyway. I'm just wanting his legs. So I took and cut him. I stamped him, and then I fussy cut him real close to the edge so that I would have the outline of him. And we are going to stamp him in our soft suede. Get him nice and inked up so he's nice and dark. And I'm going to place him so that part of his body and his head are up in my shaded sunrise. We're going to call it a sunrise or sunset. Maybe it's a sunset. Make sure my paper's straight. So we're stamping him right there in the center. Okay, that looks pretty good. Done with the soft suede. Now we're going to come in with our landscape. And this is why you need the masking paper, everybody, is because I'm going to place this over the deer as close to his shape that is stamped on my paper. Am I in the camera view? Yep. Mm hmm. And because his legs are so thin, it is kind of hard, but you can do it. And it does not have to be 100% perfect. What we're trying to accomplish is having him look like he is standing in the grass instead of the grass going over his legs. So normally with bigger cutouts, you can use your... Um, Oh, yeah, what am I talking? Your mask more than once. But these little thin line ones, you may only get once or twice out of them, and that'd be it. So he's not completely covered because I did ch chop off of his head, but that's okay. Because all I want to do is make sure that when I stamp this, it looks like he is in standing in the grass and that it's not the grass over his legs like the first time I did it. Okay, so here's the small little grassy area that's got some flowers on it. And I'm going to kind of turn this a little bit, not much, but a little bit on an angle so that it kind of gives us that illusion that it's going down a hill. I didn't get him quite. He's standing in that those weeds, all right. But we're going to bring this one up to where it's going to cover to where it's going to make it look like he's standing in and standing on a rock. Okay. So we've got those. Let me clean those real quick so that I don't get <clears throat> everywhere. And I just love my chamois. 
is so well loved. I think it's time for a new one. Now we're going to come in with our trees, and it's two trees, and this does have a die, so you could cut them out, and I'm going to anchor them down here to the bottom, and I'm also, I'm leaving my mask on my deer because I don't want to have any um, trees showing up in my deer body, so there's my trees, and these trees I'm going to bring up a little bit more so that they look like they are farther in the background, okay? So there's our trees. Do you know, ladies, that I only have 30, 35 days, 35 days and I get to go to convention. I am so excited because I will get to see new product the new catalog that's going to come out. I saw those cards. I think it might be you, Terry, because you're on the road today. Maybe there's something wrong with the hotspots, internet, or whatever along 70 or however you come. All right, now I'm going to take that sentiment that says sometimes you need to know that someone really cares and I'm going to stamp that up here in our sky. And I hope this is straight. Yes, it is pretty good. All right. Uh, let's see. Did I? I did not stamp anything on the inside, but I'm going to. They're going to stamp some of our trees. Down here in the corner on the inside of our, oh, well, isn't that lovely? I stamped them brown. We're going to flip it over. Nobody's going to know. Like yeah, I know. got to take my mask off. Yet. We need to blend the light like that. <clears throat> okay. I'm just taking and using my bone folder and flattening out the edges where it gets cut with the trimmers. All right, let's close up that brown and use that green. Should have made sure of what color I had going there. Okay. Don't forget, ladies, our card club is on October 14th because I will be going to Kansas City on the 21st for another Stamping Up event that I'm excited about. I'll be demonstrating a project. Okay. Don't think I cleaned my deer. Let me clean him up real quick. Then we're going to reveal our ear. Oops. I'm going to take my um, crumb cake and I want to blend in just a tad more while I have that mask on my deer. right in that center area so that you can really see that that is the um, ground behind him. Okay. How many of you are intimidated by building scenes? Me. Sometimes I can build them to where I really like them, and other times it's like, yeah, I'm not so sure I like that, okay? For instance, this one here. My green grass didn't get up the way my original one did, but that's also, you know, 
it's part of having a handmade card. It's where your placement is. So it still looks like he's walking in the grass. And now we're going to attach this to our black layer. And I am just using my stamp and seal plus I do wish yes Cindy I totally agree with you it's sometimes it depends on what I'm trying to build what kind of a scene because um, some scenes I can get built really easy and others it's like okay this is difficult for me so I'm just lining up my card to my layer and now we're going to attach that to the front I'm really liking to have um, black as a layer if you want something to kind of pop out and because we're putting this on a dark green mossy meadow um, card base Yes, Cindy, I like the outcome when it works well, too. They don't always work out well, and those are the ones that you have to say, okay, I tried, here's an example, and be done with it. Okay, and there is the inside of your card now. So that is card number one. Oh. My assistant is really getting in the groove of having StreamYard, which is where I can stream and then upload it to YouTube and Facebook at the same time. So you think that worked out okay, Cindy? I'm just, it, you know, each one is so different, and that's why it sometimes it makes me think, well, one isn't as good as the other one because... Sometimes my first one turns out so perfect, but I can't get it to work on the second one. All right. I am going to hand my assistant all of these inks that I'm not using. So while she's over there playing around, she can put them away. All right. I construct an awesome program. All right. So now, ladies, this is the next card that we're going to use or we're going to do. And this is going to take just a little while. Most of it's all cut out, so I'm not going to show you how to stamp, how to die cut, because it's already done. Because that would have taken way too long when I show you the pieces. All right. Now, I need honest opinions, because I already know my opinion and my um, assistant's opinion. So, here is a double Dutch fold card. So you open up the bottom two doors, and then you open up the top flap. So can any of you tell me what might be wrong with this card? You're not going to hurt my feelings, so go ahead and tell me what you think is wrong with this card. All right, so we are using Calypso Coral ink. We are using the Cottage Wreaths stamp set and die cuts so it's a bundle i did not get a chance to die cut all of these out to show you um but when you if you get this set when you first get it match up your leaves with your die for the leaves and if you notice here in your stamp there's a little arrow and I just put a little black mark with my Sharpie pen because that's where you're going to use the die to cut it out with so that it lines up perfectly for you. Okay, so on the die, there's a little tab. So when you lay that down and you've got it stamped with it going up, I would suggest up and straight then when you lay your die over it in the same direction then your die will match up because those little that little tab 
as an arrow on it as well. Okay, I know it's kind of hard to see on the camera, but that's something that I didn't necessarily know before I started jumping into this die set. So it's a trial and learn thing that I did today. And like I said, all of the die cutting is already done because I didn't want to take the time to do that. Um, so we are using the branch die and this itty bitty little pine cone. I'm not, it's not pine cone. It's an acorn. This doesn't have pine cones. And I'm using these three leaves and I'm using the die for, yes, Cindy, it is too busy. So we're not making the card like that. I redesigned it. I just didn't make another one because that one is just, it, it wasn't working for me and it wasn't working for my assistant. So I am using paper from the Happy Forest Friends. So if you got the paper share for the new catalog in June, you would have gotten some six by six paper like this. And so I chose to use um, this mushroom paper as my bottom doors. So I used the mushroom paper. Um, if it's a new thing, it's not necessarily a new thing, Cindy. I think it's done. It's been done with some other die sets. Um, so when you, and, and stamp sets. So when you're opening up your stamp set, look and see if there's a little dark, it's not really an arrow. It's one of those signs and I can't remember what they're called in math, greater than or less than signs. Um, but then that will match up with where it needs to be placed with the die. So here's the paper from the Forest Friends. And I did not get the stamp set that went with this paper. I may end up having to, I don't know. But there's these cute little bears and an owl. If you like to fussy cut, you could fussy cut those things out. You all know my stance on fussy cutting. But I love that bear. Okay, so there's the one side. And then here's the other side. We've got the mushrooms and we've got just some green leaves foliage looks like some tree slices okay but I did choose on my second card to use those mushrooms instead of the leaves like I had on my original one because I too thought that it was too busy I liked it but when I looked at it again it was like hey, I'm just not feeling that card you can't see my wreath so I did a couple of different things for it Let's get out our little bits and pieces here. So I'm still using Calypso Coral as my card base. And this has a really um, funny measurement to it. Let me get that measurement for you. The measurements and the supplies that I used will all be on my blog later this evening, if not tonight, then first thing in the morning. Um, so my card base is cut at four and three sixteenths this way, and then nine inches this way, and it's scored at five and a half. So that gives us our fold over, okay? Then you have another piece of the coordinating cardstock, whatever choose, whatever color you choose, and you can make this with any any of your supplies that you have, you can use. This is a two inch by eight and a half inch piece, and it is scored at two and one eighth from both sides. Now, my first one, we won't even show all that busyness. They kind of overlap. So that was telling me that it's not quite scored correctly. It also didn't want to fold over right. So I just cut an eight, 
sixteenth of an inch off of one side of my card base. And but now it's not wanting to fold right, but it didn't want to fold in. So by doing that, I kind of messed it up. But anyway, so this time what I did was because sometimes two and one eighth, you don't always um, get it scored just right. So I just scored one side and then I laid it on my base card and I ran my bone folder along the edge of my card like that so that it would score it and then I was able to fold it over and score it okay now there is a tiny tiny gap but that gap is not going to bother me all right so those are our bases now you have a piece of and you can use designer series paper like I did on my original one and that would be at three and a quarter by three and 15 sixteenths. That's the line right before the four inches. And like I said, you can do that with designer series paper. It just didn't work out with me using the wreath. So then I have my other two pieces of designer series paper. And these are cut at two inches by two and one eighth of an inch. And those are going to go here on these squares, okay? And there is no border around this, okay? So it, it's the full front of that square. I have a scrap of Calypso Coral that we're going to do our stamping on. And then I have a scrap of the mushroom paper, the designer paper, so that we can lay that down underneath on our card okay now I did a little bit of rearranging my measurements here because this was just a shade small and I wanted it to go side to side so I just trimmed down my white piece okay so the white piece actually for my inside measures at three and fifteen sixteenths okay instead of the four inches all right then before i came on to show you these cards i stamped and die cut my wreath using soft suede as my cardstock and soft suede as my ink so that's our wreath i cut the bow with the die cut that's in there and I cut that out of Calypso Coral. This is the stamped Calypso Coral and then die cut so there was a white edge around it. I didn't like that one as much. Then I have, and you probably will have all kinds of glare from this, but this is my little magnet bowl, but it's also holding all of my little bits. So I stamped my leaves on Old Olive, in Old Olive and Calypso Coral, so that it would give me a different shade on that green. And then I used the soft suede on Sahara Sand for my little acorns, okay? So these are our little bits that we're gonna build our wreath with. I've got something that fell underneath my feet. Okay. All right, so let's get the card itself put together first, and then we'll build our wreath, because that's going to take the little bit longest. So let's get my silicone mat. Oh, I'm going to use my liquid glue, because sometimes then I can get it moved around. All right, make sure our mushrooms are going the right direction. And I'm just going to lay this down right on the front of that flap, making sure that it butts up against that score line.
and the edge. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. This is a fun card to make. Come on. I keep getting a bubble of glue in my pin or my little stem here, and I don't know what's going on. I've changed bottles. We'll just, I think I'm going to go through this entire box of little straight pins, cleaning out my glue bottles. Okay. So anything new with anybody? Anything exciting going on in your lives? I got my hair done the other day. Y'all will just have to wait until next day at class to see what it looks like. It's kind of cute. All right. I'm going to lay this piece down. I also got a new color on my nails. I'm going fall colors. That's why I said the glue works really good because you've got a little bit of wiggle time that you can get it placed where you need it placed on there on those squares. Then if you've got any excess on showing, because sometimes you do, <coughs> you can always just take and trim it off. I don't really have that much, but just a tad. So we'll just trim that side down a little bit. Trim this side down a little bit. Sometimes it doesn't matter how hard I try to get precise in my in my cutting. It just doesn't always go that way. All right, now we're going to line this, which is our long piece of our card base. We're going to place that inside and make sure that when we fold over our front flaps, our Dutch doors here, and you may want to have it to where it's just, it's right on the inside of your score lines, not on the score lines. Otherwise, it will not fold over. Okay. So we know then that, and I'm going to take my little pencil. I'm going to actually flip this over like this. on the back side of this and I'm going to mark that isn't going to work that would be backwards I was right the first time ding 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 okay I know that I don't want my adhesive to go past those lines so I need to stay within those little teeny tiny pencil marks. So we're going to attach our stamp and seal plus, and I'm just using three continuous lines, and then I'm just going to take and fold back over any excess. Okay. Then I'm going to erase those pencil lines. They shouldn't show, but just in case they were to show, I can have them off. Still did it different or backwards, didn't I, ladies? It's a good thing I can fold my paper the other direction. And I'm going to line this up. That's why it's a good thing to put this together before you do the inside piece. So that if you make the mistake that I just made... You can fold over that top piece and furnish it real well. Oh, yes, Karen, you're leaving for another vacation. Oh, dear. Do you see what I did? I now have my designer series paper upside down. This is real, ladies. This is not edited. So let's get my take your pick tool. See, too much gabbing and not enough paying attention. And I'm going to lift up
You can do this, but you have to be very careful that you don't start ripping your cardstock. If you do start ripping it, as long as it's not ripped all the way through, you're still good. It is a pain, though, when you put something on upside down. That was... Okay, now here we go. Now it's on the right side, see? That's what happens when you're not paying attention. Yep, they'll be on the right side. So match up your sides to your folds. Match up the bottom so that it's all even. Cut off just a smidge. I'll just hate that. I do. I hate it when I get it all the way down and then it looks like, oh, I've got like one thirty second of an inch. And it's not even. There we go. Fine as frog hair. We are going to take our bone folder here, and we're going to rub it, since I lifted up that adhesive. All right, so there's the beginning of our card. Now we're going to take this piece. So after much debating and deliberating and looking for designer series paper, um, I decided on a... Sahara sand background that I embossed with the timber 3D embossing folder. Um, I thought the muted natural color will show the wreath much better. Hi, Cherie. Yes, you will have to catch the replay on the first card. We're still on the second card because Sue messed up. We're going to lay that evenly down so that there is an even border on all four sides, or as even as Sue can get it. All right, so there is our front, and that looks a tad off. Move this up just, see, it's like a 32nd of an inch. Sometimes the design of the paper also makes it look crooked. But now I got glue on my hands. I'm such a mess today. Thank you, Cindy. It was a good save. All right, let's build. Well, let's just go ahead and get this stuck down. And then we've got everything stuck down. And we will stamp our greeting. Because there's not a whole lot of stamping to this. You can definitely, you could do this with any kind of DSP or any kind of um, stamp set. If you've got dies, you could put a flower on it. Um, you can make a Christmas card out of this using this style of card. All right. That's just going to go on the inside. I'm not stamping it so that you all can stamp it with whatever greeting you want. So that will be included in the card. So it will go like that. Let me get my stamp, which says grateful. And we're just going to stamp it on. Where is my pad? Get my piercing mat out here so that I can stamp this. And I'm stamping it on about a half of, no, it's not a half inch. That didn't. Yes, it's a half inch piece of paper. And I don't like the way that T turned out. So we're cutting that off. We're going to wipe this off and start again. Right. 
So there is our little banner that isn't really quite straight. Go figure for Sue. It's because I'm trying to stamp sitting down and I can't. Well, that just doesn't make any sense to me. It was straight when I made it this morning earlier. Give me another piece of scrap paper. One thing I got lots of is scrap paper. Just need half of an inch though. Let me cut a half inch piece. Didn't want one that was any wider than a half inch because it would be too big for our little wreath. All right. Let me clean this and we're going to set it up again. Yes, Cindy, I agree. I liked it much better with the embossed um, cardstock rather than the busyness of the designer series paper. I'm just kind of trying to get my little flocks of paper off of there. All right, grateful. Sit down there and behave yourself. Oh, my. What is, I think it's the font. No, it's not. This is really aggravating me, ladies. There we go. Now I got it straight. Then all I'm going to do is just cut my paper with a diagonal. Oh, and after all that, guess what? <laughs> I used my brown. But we're going with the... Because we're doing other things with this differently. So we're going with the Calypso Coral. All right, so that is for that. Here is our little bits. Okay, so who thinks, now disregard the background, okay? We're not talking the background. We're talking about how the wreath looks with the built-up leaves and acorns. Do you like that? Or do you think that we should put the leaves around and scatter the acorns? I know you're going to have a hard time seeing that on the brown. Um, so it would kind of look something like this. We would put our leaves down. Oops. get on there and then the green one stay there we go So coral, it's not wanting to flip over for me. OK, 
Okay, something like that. And then our bow would go here at the bottom. Do you think you would on the solid color, Cindy, do what? And then here's our little acorns that we would kind of scatter in with them. So what do you think? Do you think you would want it to be like this, where it's all on one side? Or kind of in a circle with the leaves around the... wreath. Now it won't be on the black or on the white background. Remember that it's going to be on that Sahara sand color. But that gives you kind of an idea. Okay, so the way I'm doing it now, you don't you don't care one way or the other. I think I'm going to try it this way where it's um, kind of just scattered amongst it. Um, Okay, so I'm going to place, here's my take your pick tool, and I'm just going to take a little bit of glue and put it on the back of my leaves. You could do this with the glue dots. I just am not going to fight with them, except I'm fighting with this. Fighting with this because I'm hot. Maybe I should not have closed my pool up so soon. Everybody would go swimming in October, right? Okay, we don't want that dab of glue to get on there. How about if we do this? I think I'm just going to take and dab our wreath. I think that might be easier. Well... See, I had an idea, or I got an idea from somebody else. You put a little rubber band on your little bottles, and then you stick that little lid in those in that underneath that rubber band, and it'll keep that out of your way. And here I am still fighting with it. And you could do all your leaves in one color. I just wanted to, st I just stamped mine in two different colors, um, the Calypso Coral and the old olive. I got some little bits hiding out here underneath there. So does anybody have this um, stamp set to cottage wreaths? When I seen it, I thought it was so pretty. And it is, it's again one of those that um, you have to build on. And I did quite a few leaves because I just wasn't really sure how many we were going to want. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to fill in some more kind of making them go the other direction oops that one might have got a little bit much glue I'll just take a little piece of scrap paper if I've got too much glue on it and get some of it wiped up I 
So you could really basically do as many or as few as you would want on your wreath and have them going however, whatever direction you'd want them to go. And then the acorns, we're going to give them a little bit of dimension. And I've got three acorns. And I, whoops, <laughs> that little leaf decided to stick to my finger. Okay, so I've got two greens there and two of the Calypso coral. So I think that's where we're going to stick our um, little acorns. And I'm going to get, I know I got it out here. Somewhere on my desk. My little mini dimensionals. There they are. I had pushed them way, way far away. All right, so let me turn over all of my acorns. Get our dimensionals on there so that they are kind of popping up. And these the many the mini dimensionals fit just perfect on the acorn towards the center of it. So take off all of our paper backings. They're sticking to me. Okay. Let go of me. All right. Now we're just going to kind of take and put our acorns right in between where our leaves are the same colors. Just like that. So what do you think, ladies? Does that look okay to you all? Okay, now let's add our little bow down here. And I'm not going to pop it up. I'm going to leave it flat. So I'm going to kind of look on the back and see where I'm going to place my glue at, which is, and I'm going to put it on the bow. It's right along in here. To attach that to our wreath. Dab that excess glue. It just had two little spots on it that. Okay, here is my card now. And we are going to place this here. Now, on my original card, I had the grateful. on the one corner of the wreath. However, because I've done the flowers different, I think I'm going to attach it like it's in the center of the wreath. But I really don't like it stamped in that color because it blends in too much. So let me find my soft suede. And I'm going to restamp that so that it kind of stands out more so. much better that stands out much better don't you think ladies which one do you guys like better 
the brown one yeah all right so to give this the illusion that it is popped up we are going to pop this on our mini dimensionals not yet we have to first put our wreath down and i'm not popping the wreath up or oh, wait a minute do i want to pop the wreath up yes let's pop our wreath up i think you can pop this one Oh, I popped it up on the other one. I'm glad that we all agreed that the brown one looked better because I, like I said, I just stamped it in the wrong color when I was stamping it because it was supposed to be brown. You know, ladies, even after two and a half years of doing videos, I'm still a nervous wreck to do them. Don't ask me why, but I am. Now I want to make sure that I have plenty of dimensionals on here so that it doesn't sag anywhere. You might want to definitely put extra postage on this one. Maybe even put a little extra cardstock on the top of it to keep it safe in mailing. Okay. So now we're going to place this in the center of our card there, like so. And that needs to be pushed a little bit. Okay, now I think we can, if we want to, I'm going to pop up our little grateful and have it sitting right inside of our wreath. I just love these little mini dimensionals. They're so cute. I don't know how many of you know it, but Pat and I used to work in a miniature shop. She used to own a miniature shop, and I helped her out and worked in it. Okay, so there is our grateful. There is our inside piece. And the last thing that I did was I gave it some sparkle. So I sparkled up my acorns. And I sparkled up my bow. And I think I'm not going to do a lot of gems on it. But what I am going to do is I'm going to take one of the um, champagne rhinestones and I'm going to put it in the center, one of the tiny ones, and I'm going to put it in the center of our bow. Just like that. So what do you think, ladies? Yay or nay? It was a set that I've had that I've been wanting to play with, and I hadn't played with it yet, so I thought maybe today would have been... Today was a good day to play with it. All right, so that's card number two. We're going to set it aside. And those. Card number three. All right, card number three is using that um, Vows of Holly paper that. It's okay. There's just some of it in there that is just not my style. Like that um, Christmas, camouflage. Christmas camouflage. But I do like the stamp set, the Leaves of Holly. And I do like the die set. 
and I did take the initiative this morning and I did die cut all of the dies that are in the stamp or in the set. So you have two leaves, one that has the detail that you can lay over, uh, just a plain cut out one. You got a large one and a small one. This piece here goes behind these leaves here. So you have one um, die that will do uh, like a tag. Then you have another banner tag here. You have two little sprigs and then you have the holly berries. This is the um, solid and then these are the uh, details of it, okay? So we're gonna use this and this die today. And then this is the set that, or the stamp set that coordinates with that uh, set. Okay, and we're using Evening Evergreen. And I am using the Christmas Wishes. And I am using the one small leaf, and that's going to go on the inside of our card. And so this is the card made with that paper. It's the one that has the Christmas trees all over it. Okay. And then we're going to use some of the adhesive um, backed sequins like I had given you at the Christmas class. All right. So the first thing we're going to do, I have everything pre-cut again because I didn't want to have to try the die cut because I knew that we might be running short of time. So we are going to attach our designer series paper. See, this is the other side that I'm just not really fond of. It just looks too dark and muted for me. But everybody has their own tastes and likes, dislikes. And that is perfectly all right. So now we're going to attach our trees to a piece of soft succulent. So the designer series paper measures um, five by three and three quarters. Our soft succulent layer is five and a quarter by four. And our card base is the regular card base, eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter. Center that on there like so. Then I'm going to attach, before I do that in case I mess up, we are going to stamp our greeting. Now, for the sake of doing the demonstration, I didn't stamp first. However, with something like this, you might want to stamp first to make sure that you've got it straight and you don't mess up. So I'm Hoping, really hoping that I get it stamped straight for us today. And this is an evening evergreen. No, I'm holding my breath. Y'all holding your breath. Okay, looks pretty straight. Yay. Okay. Now I have a yes, thank you, thank you. All right, I had a piece of white paper to go on the inside of it. This what did I do with it? Well. I think this one is a little bit short, but that's okay. We're going to use it, and then I'll replace it. So then I just took my small leaf. And I'm not going to use my pad because I'm going to do it off down here on my grid paper. Okay, so that's going to go on the inside of our card, so our stamping is all done. 
So this is a real simple to put together card. Now we're going to take this piece. This is that this is that one little funny looking die. And I couldn't figure out what in the world it was for until I thought, oh, yes. So it goes behind those cutouts on this so that it's not just blah. So we're going to use now you could run this through with the adhesive sheet on the back, but I didn't want to waste a whole adhesive of sheet for this area here. I didn't think that it was necessary. So I'm just going to use my glue and just kind of put little dots. On the areas that I want it to stick to. Because not every little piece has to be stuck. All right, now my, there it is. I want to use my silicone mat, though, because when I want to lay this down, I want to make sure that I don't get glue where I don't necessarily want glue when I squeeze it out. So it just takes a few seconds to let that dry. And then we're going to place that. And I did not pop this up. You could if you wanted to. And the more I'm looking at this, the more I'm thinking that we're popping it up. Because I think it will come away from those trees. It'll show up better on those trees. So we're going to take our regular dimensionals now. Dorothy always laughs at me because I pick up the paper, but not the dimensionals. I don't understand it. And that's another reason why I didn't use the adhesive sheet was because I didn't know if I was going to use dimensionals. And here again, because it's a long one, I am making sure that I have good placement for my dimensionals. Those paper backings off of there. Oops. All right. We're going to lay this flat down on our card. Yes, I like that much better where it's off of the off of that. And now we're going to take some of our little sequins. going to scatter some sequins on here. Put some little sequins at the tips of some of these trees. And normally I only do three sequins, but I think our little greeting down here needs to have a couple. So I'm still staying within my odd number of five. But that is our Christmas card for this week. So let me move all of this crud out of the way. Well, Cherie, I would love to see all the Christmas cards that you've made with that set. I should have had you do the video today since you've used it so much. I would love to see you and what you have created. All right, so this card, it's a no-go. I'm going to do something to it to fix it, but that's a no-go. It's too cluttered. Okay. So here is card number three, which looks basically the same as mine. This stuff still is all in my way. Well, and that's for the inside of this card. For your Christmas greeting. Oh, 
all my scraps and bits. All right. Card number two, which is our double Dutch fold card. And then card number one, where we did the sponging. So, which one is y'all's favorite today? Let me know which one you like the best. We have number one, number two, number three. Oh, she's just loving to play around here. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. All right. I noticed that, that wasn't laying flat as I wanted it to. Okay. Cindy likes number one. Cherie, what's your vote? I know you didn't see me make number one, but you can see what the product is. Karen likes number one. I think I'm just going to start doing Thursday one or one on Thursday. Okay, well, ladies, if there are no more votes... You ordered the, yes, you ordered real red cardstock, and it was low inventory. Oh, wow. I think I've got real red. It will come back in, I'm sure. Everybody was hit because of the free shipping. Cherie likes number one. Pat likes three, two, and one. I can't make just one. I know. It's really hard for me to make just one. All right, ladies, you all have an awesome, awesome weekend. Stay safe out there, and I will see you next week on the 13th for another three on Thursday. Not sure what I'm going to be working on, but I'm sure I've got something up my sleeve. Hello, Mary. We're just getting ready to end. You get to see the pictures of the completed cards, and then you can go watch how we put them together all of the dimensions for the measurements and the cutting and what I've used will be out on my blog. So bye everybody. We will see you next Thursday.